So, I mean, there was no big lights or bells and whistles that told me I was going to be a professional artist. I just loved the paint. I was born in 1940, uh, grew up in Redmond uh, on 40th and off of Bill Red Road in the Kirkland area for the 16 years of my early life and moved in when I was 17 and I was a junior in high school at that time at Lake Washington High School. I was always drawing. I have some old drawings. I grew up during World War II, and so I've got some interesting drawings when I was around five and six of airplanes and American airplanes and German airplanes and all that. That you drew, you drew. I drew the back of some of Aunt, uh, Mom's uh, uh, artwork and <laughs> things that I found. I started painting and selling it at uh, Wenatchee Valley College, and I had a gallery in Wenatchee, and I had some people that bought my work then. When I transferred to uh, Seattle Pacific College, I sold there to make some money for college. And of course, Andy and I were married in 66. I was a school teacher for two years. Highland High School as an art teacher, and Olympic Junior High School the following year. And I, I started selling at the Burien Arts Festival shops. And the, this house became available to us when we moved up here in 1969 and lived across the street in 70, we moved into this house. Doc had, my father-in-law had decided to give some of the children some property because you know, that's what you do when you get to a certain point in your life. You can't take it all with you and so you might as well bless your children. And he did. Gave us an empty house, no water, no electricity. <laughs> we moved in in 1970. And I had acquired my first one-man show at the Fire Art Museum in 1972. And the reason that happened is I just went down to the museum, showed Mrs. Greathouse some of my work. Kate Greathouse was a wonderful person, encouraged local artists. Mike had had a show there, and I said, if Mike can have a show there, why can't I? So I inquired, she liked my work, um, got the two big breaks. I mean, the shows at the Fire Art Museum, if I were trying to get a show at the Fire Art Museum today, it'd be impossible. But then I got two, either in 72 or in 79, which, which was my second one-man show at the Fire Art Museum. She said, Jack, you should go and study with Sergei Bongard. I didn't even know who Sergei Bonkar was. If I could drag back the years and do it all over again, I would definitely have gone to Idaho studying with Sergei Bonkar. Some of my friends like Bill Reese did and others, and I could have learned a lot. But he was an oil painter and I didn't think I would fit in as a watercolorist, so I never did. Any of later on they had a, a display of paintings that they had purchased, the Fry Art Museum. And I went to the show, and here's uh, a big abstract painting of Chen Shi in the middle. Really beautiful. He did a kind of calligraphy type of work. And uh, then on one side was Philip Jameson, on the other side, old humble Jack Dorsey. <laughs> and I was puffed up in my mind and everything else. But that really made my day. That was really neat. I was displaying with two of the ancient's great artists. What happened, Jason, is I, I mean, you were born in 69. We moved into this house in 1970, you were a little child. I had to learn how to do carpentry, electrical, plumbing, you name it. I, you know, I did it all by hand. I had no tools, I had no equipment, I had nothing, no money. <laughs> so we kind of roughed it here. We still are in some ways. and. Uh, But in 79, a neighbor up the road who worked for the Boeing Company said, Jack, you should hire on at the Boeing Company. And I was 39. 
and I thought, oh, maybe I should work for a couple years and make enough money to finish the house and all that. I ended up working there for 15 years. Uh, it was devastating in some ways because it killed my art. And I was a technical illustrator and I slowly stopped painting because I worked so many long hours. And so it wasn't until after 97 and 98 when I had finished some work on the house here because the house had not been finished. And I did a lot of remodeling on my own. Um, in 99 is when I joined the Stanwood Communal Arts Tour and I started painting ser seriously again and then I would have a show every spring uh, at our house here. And I started selling, really, like, lights out. My friend Tom Jones and Mike Burns, Mike passed away very suddenly reading an aneurysm. And uh, Mike and I were good friends and we were starting to see each other. And then when I went to the memorial service for Mike, I saw Tom. And Tom and I and Mike were at the PG Sound Group of Painters. I was a member of the Northwest Watercolor Society ship, uh, uh, membership and a, a roster of painters. And then I was invited in 1981 to be a PG Sound member group. So we saw each other a lot, and then when Mike passed away, we, Mike, uh, Tom and I became fast friends because I didn't know that he and Mike were good friends. Uh, and I didn't know Tom that well at that point. But he's got high expectations for himself. And so it says in the Bible, it says, iron sharpens iron, and you know. And so my friend Tom, you know, raised the bar for 